Is this your stage gear, by the way, or do uh, you? It's what I got up in. You know? right. Well, Peter, it's very nice to see you. I suppose some people will be amazed to see you. Yeah, I, I like to be unpredictable and you know, surprise myself by actually returning it and making an album, yeah. It's how the West was won. It's how the West was won. At the point of a gun, like they've always done. Accompanied by his sons, Peter Perrett is back with perhaps the most unexpected solo album of the year. It has the political bite and dark sardonic humour that his patient fans will remember him for. Just like everybody else, I'm in love with Kim Kardashian. She's taken over from J-Lo as my number one. If it provokes thought, then that's an added bonus, but really I just wanted to make people laugh, because um, laughter is extremely therapeutic, especially in times that are seemingly bad. Many rock fans adore Perrett for Another Girl, Another Planet, which he wrote and performed in the 70s with his then band, The Only Ones. It's been covered by many other acts. To some, it's the best rock song ever. It's been described as an adrenaline rush from beginning to end and yeah it's probably the, the most difficult song for me to perform which is unfortunate because it's like my most well-known song but you know there's three minutes of classic rock music I think you know it's perfect you know I don't think it's the best song I've ever written but it's probably the best record I've ever made in an admittedly crowded field, Perrett's been notable among rock musicians as a recluse and user of drugs. Apart from brief forays into recording and performing, he's gone missing for much of the last four decades. Where have you been, your fans will want to know, and what have you been doing in the years when we haven't seen too much of you? Um, I suppose it was like spirit, spiritual research exploring the inner universe um, it's a very controlled environment you know there's certain security and comfort one fairly lurid account described you as being sequestered in a crumbling gothic mansion in forest hill mm. um buying. it wasn't gothic it, it was, wasn't it was, gothic. It was victoria yeah victoria. and there was a certain amount of drug dealing going on there well you you know it becomes You know, you live in the black economy and um, you don't exist in, in, in society. You're, you're disconnected from society and, you know, drugs are the currency. But uh, I guess it wasn't without cost and you would know better than anybody. Um, I believe you, you missed both your parents' funerals. Yeah, yeah, that was, yeah, it's not good, you know obviously it's not good to look back and regret things but obviously you can't help thinking about things um, but all you can do is learn from them and appreciate the people that are around you in the present and try to give them as much love as you can there's no peace for the wicked they say no peace for the wicked loud and clear no peace for the wicked the angels tell me no peace for the Let's talk about the vagaries of the rock life. One minute you're flying to Rio on Concord, sometime later you're saying that your publishing rights subsidise your benefits. You weren't <laughs> earning so much from publishing that you were ineligible for benefits. I don't know whether I ought to talk about benefits because, like, you know, I'm so, with this government, it's like a dangerous territory. Do you know what I mean? Because that's the worst thing is when they try and stop your benefits. You know? I was on benefits and we did the Jules Holland show in 2008. 
confirming our worst fears Their hands are busy every day The promised land and We got this whole investigation and I tried really? to explain that just doing the Jules Holland show, you know, because we were unsigned at the time, they actually paid for the hire of the PA, but you don't actually make any money. Most people just go on there because they want to be on the Jules Holland show because it's the only show. So um, they didn't believe me. And so this whole investigation, and it's a stressful thing. And you know, I really identify with poor people because I know what it's like to be part of the underclass, you know. Don't worry. Perrett's new record includes this love song to his wife Zena, his companion of almost 50 years. He's been clean and sober for eight years now. So how did he do it? We got to the, we'd taken things to the extreme where there was an imminent possibility uh, of the end of our existence, especially my wife who became a lot more damaged by uh, you know, the consumption than, than I was. And um, realized that we owed it to the people that cared about us to you know, have one last attempt. I feel like a total newcomer, so it's all new to me and I'm enjoying it even more than I did in the 70s because I'm taking it all in, there's no distractions. You know, I'm fully focused on just enjoying that moment when I'm singing into a microphone.